Hello. Say hi, Zoya. Zoya doesn't want to say hi today. So today we'll be talking about how I met her father. So this is actually a letter to Zoya. So, so Zoya, when you're watching this in the future, this is mommy recording how I met your daddy. Um, yeah, so let's get into it, yes? Now, I've been dropping name suggestions about, you know, some friends who suggested some things and some friends whose names I know and it's just not connecting. So, from now on, anybody who says anything to me and I use the idea, I'm going to drop your names. Yes? So, this was a suggestion by um, my friend Kimberly Christie. And she said that, you know, I could talk about how I met Zoe's father. So today we'll be talking about how I met Zoe's father. Okay, so let's start. Where do I start? I will start from the beginning. So I'm from a Christian family and I am a Christian. Proud, born again, um, child of Christ, child of God. So I'm a Christian and one of my values is no sex before marriage. So you know growing up with these hormonal boys, you know, they want to have sex and all of that, right? So I was like, nope, no sex before marriage. I'm going to be virtuous, stay virtuous and abstain from sexual relations. And my parents really grew me right and grew me with... Um, what would I say? Gusto, you know, like the ability to um, to not yield to peer pressure. So yeah, go do your thing, go do your thing, go do your thing. Let mommy speak, yeah? Go do your thing. To not yield to peer pressure, to stand and believe firm in, in whatever I believe, right? So I had this boyfriend and mommy, daddy, if you're watching this, <laughs> Um, sorry. So I started dating from first form. Lord of mercy. Sorry, mommy and daddy. But anyway, so I started <laughs> dating from first form. You know, you have your little boyfriend here and there, and you know, I'm cute, and you know, on a meet up after school, or you know, at puppy. And I think this video is going to get me in more trouble than I bargained for but let's let's go ahead let's go ahead and see where this video goes and if it makes the cut I'll publish it if I realize, if I realize that it's it's going to cause more problems but then again I'm a big 27 year old woman right mommy daddy can't can do nothing to me now no. <laughs> all right so anyways yes so I started dating in first form and you know, you meet, you meet up with them going to school and then buy a bag juice and buy a party and all of those things and everything is nice. Um, but then, you know, three months into the relationship, they more kiss. So you say, all right, kiss. And then four months into the relationship, they more touch up. And you're like, mm, no. And then later on into the relationship, they want to have sex. And I am not one to yield to peer pressure and i'm like no so like eventually i kept changing boyfriends changing boyfriends because every time we hit like we're, we're dating for a while eventually they'll want to have sex and then i no boyfriends those names those are ones that i will not drop so no, so don't even think about it yes so um i i i I was in a relationship with this guy. Man, oh man, why did I, why did I? But it was so bad. And it ended so badly that I decided that I am just not going to be in any relationship at all. And it was just really emotionally draining 
and uh, it really hit my self confidence in such a way where I just needed to find me to be me so I, I started dating myself so when I when I tell Brian about this he's like oh my gosh you're so yeah. pathetic <laughs> but he's like yeah oh my gosh you're so pathetic because I used to carry myself out to dates because I was I needed to erase all the memories that I had of him so I deliberately went back to the places where we dated and made new memories with myself right so um I went to Devon House, I bought myself ice cream, I went to the movies by myself, eventually my sisters came along, I went to places where I knew we went before, <laughs> and just erasing, erasing what are my thoughts, my deeds, anything, right? So, um, I grew spiritually sound, I grew even more determined to stay within my spiritual lane and just to withhold my values and to stay true to myself. So, um, that, believe it or not, that happened for four years. And I decided that at this time, boys, they were just not on my level. What I wanted, commitment, because I came from a family that is like the best and I'm not saying this just because I'm in the family of course I'm biased but my parents set a foundation where anything else was just not not acceptable like I was not going to have sex and I was not going to be with the Lego Lego boy where ooh, ooh. you understand what I'm saying because my father is a stand-up guy and I wanted a stand-up man to to be committed to me to build a family with and they, they just never wanted that they just wanted sex I'm like obviously this is not going to work they're not on my level so you know what I'm going to do I'm just going to focus on my work I'm just going to focus on school so I had this so my godfather at the time, um, as I told him my decision, Mr. Reed, may his soul rest in peace. And he said that, you know what, I support you, but let me be your valentine until you find somebody who can be your valentine for you. So every valentine's day, every birthday, he would ensure that... I got a present so that I wasn't necessarily lacking all of the um, what I would get from you know a boyfriend um, in terms of like the presents and stuff if you understand what I'm saying it wasn't like he was really awesome and I'll skip over this really quickly because I don't want to get emotional about it um, but yeah so he became my my Valentine for four years Mama, are you pooing? Come, come. She's really concentrating really, really, really hard. I never necessarily missed, um, you know, the presents that I'd get from, from, from guys or whatever. And I had all the love and the support that I needed from my family. And I just wasn't craving that love that I'd get from a guy because I knew what came with it. Eventually, the need to have sex. And I wasn't going to have that. And I wasn't going to waste my energy trying to meet somebody. The process of meeting somebody, talking to them, um, you know, getting to know them, talking on the phone, playing house. Hi, babe. How are you? It was just, eventually, it gets very toxic. And eventually, you just don't want to have anything to do with it. So eventually, I wanted nothing to do with it. I was beyond that and above it, if you can say that, right? So, so yeah, so Yui came and I'm like, yeah, full force. I'm going to just do my work and everything. So um, I had a friend, well, I have a friend. Her name is Shanika Manning. And um, we came from Alpha, um, Proud Alpharian. So we came from Alpha and um, she did economics and I did um, integrated marketing communications, which is my major, which is basically advertising, PR, and social marketing, right? So, anyway, um, 
So she was always, so this, firstly, this is my version of how I met Brian. Oh, my husband's name is Brian Black. So this is my version of how I met Brian. And when Brian watches this, he's going to say, you lie, I never say it go. However, Brian, you're not here to tell your version. And even if you were here, you wouldn't. So until you're ready to tell your version of how you met me, this is how I met you. Or how we met. This is my version and we're sticking to it. So this is the truth, yeah? So eventually, she, you know, I'd visit her over Sosie because we were um, at University of the West Indies. I mean, where are you? She was always talking about her friend Shanti. So sometimes I'd go over e um, the Econ Economic Tree, Sosai Tree or whatever they call it. And I'd say, hi Shanika, you know, i just chill with her for like just a few minutes. So uh, unbeknownst to me, Brian was there watching me, right? And he's like, oh, in his head, he's like, she's so cool. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. But, you know, I, I, I did not want a guy at the time. So I was not even aware of him, you know? Like, I saw him, but I was just not interested because because of what I said before, because of what I told you guys before, eventually guys, they, they just want to have sex, right? So I was like, hmm. so I'd see him here and there and I'd be like, hi, because they were really close, so they're always together, right? So I'd see him here and there and I'm like, hi. But in his head, he's like, yo, I need to meet this girl. And Brown told me that he really wanted to be my friend and he was stalking me on Facebook so he would look at the pictures on Facebook on my, uh, on my profile picture. <laughs> he would look at the pictures on Facebook and everything. We were in the days of Blackberry Messenger, right? So let me tell you how fast forward. So he was always looking at me when I came to the tree and I was just not looking at him because I did not want to have a boyfriend. So this was from first year to, to, to second year. So we didn't talk at all first year and second year. So it was the day of final exam, um, the end of the end of second year, my final exam and they were going into exam. And we crossed right at Beehive there. And I was coming out and they were going in and I wished them good luck. And it was that day that Brian asked Shanika for my my pin, my BB pin. No, but before that, when I'd have a birthday, he'd send the birthday messages to Shanika to to tell me. Now that was really cute, but like at that time I'm like Okay, it's just one of the many other persons who send birthday messages to me. So I'm like, oh, all right, that's nice. But unbeknownst to me, he was like really feeling the Shante vibes on him. Oh, you know, gets up all into this and climb the tree, you know, everything, right? So anyway, <laughs> so anyways, um, talking this, I'm talking that. So he messaged me, and we, and, and then, like he'd message me today, and I'd message him eventually. So it wasn't really a rush because, as you were, as as you know, I'm, I have a lot of friends. I wasn't really looking for another friend, and he was a guy, and you know how I felt about him at the time. So um, one day he messaged messaged me, and I realized. Come. One day he messaged me and I realized that he never made any grammatical errors in the text. Because usually the guys that I used to date, I don't know what right upon my head, right? Not all of them. Some were very stand up. But anyways, the guys, some of the guys that I used to, to date and even the guys that I used to text just as friends, they were grammatically challenged, if I must say. And I kept, in my head, I kept 
correcting them and even sometimes I was just beyond it so much so that I'd send back their messages corrected grammatically, right? But I was talking to Bran and I realized that this guy didn't make a grammatical error. And I'm like, okay, wow, maybe I need to just stop and look. So anyway, I stopped and I hated getting calls, hated, hated, hated getting calls, right? But one day, my mama, 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 mama. So one day Brian called me and I really, really um, hated getting calls at the time because it's free nights, digital free nights at the time, right? So everybody kept calling, you know, everybody have free nights. So I really hated getting calls, but I decided to answer because he set a good standard at the beginning. Um, he, you know, he was, he was interesting as well, witty as ever. And his brain is like, top notch so you know from the messages I was intrigued so he called me and I answered and I realized that we were talking for like three hours and I also realized that my cheeks hurt so much because I kept laughing now I live in Mavis Bank and the signal in Mavis Bank is a really 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 bad so I had to catch up at the window right catch up with the phone on my ears right because i never had the earphones at the time so catch up with the phone on the ears just to get the signal so that the call don't drop <laughs> so the fact that i was on the call for three hours showed how you know him really grabbed my attention and had me hooked because that was some commitment to be on a call with somebody who is not a friend from a long, long, long time ago talking for three hours. And then I was laughing the entire, entire, entire duration, right? So we were on the phone and I'm like, when I came off, I'm like, wow, okay. Okay, I actually think I like this guy because he's so interesting his brain is just superb he has a wit unlike any other person i've met and i mean the things that he comes up with on the fly it's just crazy the first thing that attracted me to him was his brain full stop his brain he's amazing really why am i saying this <laughs> why am i even saying this about brand Bra, you know I love you. So anyway, yeah. So his brain is super amazing. And if Zoya gets that brain, if if she gets his dry wit, I'm dead. Because if anybody knows Brian, everybody knows that Brian jokes about every single thing. Brian jokes about everything, which is which is a good thing and a bad thing because he takes nothing seriously. And I love that about him. And what I hate about him is that he, he takes nothing seriously so it's a blessing and a curse so yeah so we started texting like the last yeah yeah the story i get nice so so anyways we started texting a lot a lot and uh, so you know the months whatever may june july august our relationship was just was, well we were friends at the time but but, but time but um, eventually we started developing feelings for each other and I should tell you guys about our first date I should tell you guys about our first date what, that Zoya <laughs> made that was a really a first date so in August of that year in August of that year we um, he decided that oh you know he would he would like to carry me to a movie. So now I, yeah, talk, you text him somebody, but you don't really know if he's really interested. Yes, they said that. You don't really know if he's really interested. So I said, okay, all right, free movie, all right, good. White House Stone, went to carry to White House Stone. And when I saw this guy, him come in a iron shirt, you know, he made an effort. We're going to carry. People don't dress up to go to carry, but he dressed 
up and no i cannot get brian to dress up like i cannot get brian to wear a shirt that needs to be ironed but when he was looking me yeah he dressed up in an iron was it white or yellow bright i don't remember yellow white anyways yellow or white shirt and he was like chris him ear did you know do up and thing and i was like very impressed but anyways we went into carib and it was very dark because the movie theater is very dark. and i immediately catch my friend i'm like what what am i doing in this and then he was so shy at the time right so he was very expressive um over the phone but in person he was very shy so i'm like let me call on my sister so sash is my wingman shaya she tell it to me straight like in, with everything she's like like just generally she's like She's like a straight cut person. You can't really run with her or anything. But Sash, Sash indulges me, right? So I called up Sash and I'm like, Sash, I'm with this guy at Carib and I don't even know if I like him. Can you come? So to Brian, I'm like, Brian, um, my sister always will watch this show, you know? Oh my gosh. And look, she just messaged me and said that she come in to watch it. Ain't nobody else me message her right now. And I'm like, come and need help, please, thanks. So anyway, Sash came, right? And Sash was there, I was there, and Brian was there. And I talked to Sash the entire movie. <laughs> but I talked to Sash the entire movie, and uh, yeah, Brian bought some food and milk. And me and Sash, she's saying bad, and that's true, that's what's just really bad. So me and Sash ate the food, right? So we follow Belly and enjoy the movie. And then we went home, but Brian and I continued texting, and we eventually started um, liking each other more. Um, we eventually started liking each other more. We came to UA um, in September for our final year. And we started really seeing each other every day. He would, I would, he would come over to Caramac in the mornings. So I very vocal today. So he would come over to Caramac in the mornings and we would talk. And in the evenings, he would walk me up to Papine and so I could catch my country bus. And we eventually started developing real feelings for each other. Um, eventually, we we used to um, we made a decision to see each other every Saturday, and we used to have some mini dates at um, mini dates at Hope Gardens. They were just so they was just they were just so beautiful. It was just really a great time, honestly. On October 27, we went to Gloria's, and we we had this nice little picnic thing on the beach, and he asked me to be his girlfriend. And the rest is history. Um, yeah, so that is how. Zoya, that is how I met your father. Okay? That's how I met your daddy. <laughs> so that is how I met my husband now. And our love story. It's, our love story is really like very boy meets girl, boy falls in love with a girl. Girl falls back in love with boy, we get married and stuff, right? <laughs> so I don't want to make this very long. So if you want to hear more, you can just request it, comment in the co um, comment below. You can message me on Instagram. Remember, I'm I'm there at CV Momolog or my personal page is fine. And if you want to know more about maybe our engagement, how Brian proposed. <laughs> over KFC then uh, yeah I mean yeah, yeah you can let me know but that is how I met that is how I met her father and Zoya whenever you're watching this know that you were created in love you were made in love from the very beginning you were made in love Bry was the only one who could get me to break my four-year stint the fact that I was willing to give up my independence of being with me to be with him he was the only one who 
was really a stand-up guy in such a way where he honored my principles where you know and I just really want to, to comment that in life like whatever your word is stick by it your word is your bond and your word shall always be your bond and if you cannot abide by your word then who are you what what you know what values do you have eventually there will be a lot of guys but eventually there will be that one guy that is willing to stick to the standards that you set that is willing to work with you and that is willing most importantly to wait so Zoya no matter what no matter what happens don't think that time is running out don't think that you know you need to compromise don't think that you need to lower your standards um, I was grown to, to believe that sex before marriage is wrong sex can wait and it definitely did in my case and it definitely can in your case so yeah baby that is how um, I met your father and uh, um, I fell in love with him then and oh my gosh it's so mushy but I am in love with him now even more so I never thought like every day you think that you can't be in love with a person even more but the more he annoys me the more I love him the more I get to learn his quirks, the more I love him. And the more we get to build and raise uh, build a family and raise Zoya together, the more I love him. So essentially, that is how I met your dad. So thank you guys for watch watching. This was really fun to record. <laughs> and Brian is going to have my head after this video is done. So you might not get another video for, from me because I'm, I might be dead after this. Like, yeah, Brian, I'm gonna kill me. But Brian, I invite you to come and share how you met me, how we met, you know? To like, yeah, let the people them know your side of the story. Because this is my side of the story, this is the truth, and until they hear your side, this is how all that happened. This is all that matters. So thank you so much. Remember to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. We can get to 1,000 subscribers. We will get to 1,000 subscribers. So, until next time, say bye Zoya.